This is the SIG P365 SAS versus the Springfield Hellcat RDP. Let's hit the range. Now one thing I want to acknowledge right off the bat here is, while we're probably comparing apples from two different orchards, we're not comparing, I'd say, the same type of apple. Right? We're, we'll acknowledge that. You got The RDP has the, the red dot and the compensator whereas the SAS it doesn't even have the normal sights it has the bullseye sights so yes we're aware but yes we're still doing this review because I think the results were actually quite surprising the SIG P365 SAS or SIG anti-snag is a striker fired 9mm micro double stack pistol. It has an overall length of 5.8 inches, a height of 4.3 inches, a width of 1 inch, weighs in at 17.8 ounces, and has a barrel length of 3.1 inches. The SAS model has low profile controls. The slide release is minimized to help reduce snag, is that anti snag name. And you'll notice the takedown lever is also replaced with just a takedown screw head. Some people are definitely not going to like that. Another mentionable here is some models of the P365 have a flat face trigger. This model does not. Now let's talk about what most people are probably going to consider the most controversial part of this SAS model. Instead of your traditional sights, it has the FT Bullseye Fiber Tritium Night Sight. Now this is a very interesting sight concept in my opinion. Now rather than a blading groove or a three diet or box and dot or whatever, as the name implies this is actually a bullseye sight. You want to center the dot in the circle so it looks like a bullseye on a target and that's what your sight picture is. It's different. Now let me give you a top down view of it. I believe you can actually remove this and replace it with a red dot, but don't quote me on that. But as you can see, the bullseye side is actually quite large in terms of the real estate it takes up on the slide of the gun. And there is that big window that's about the first quarter of it where it gets the light from the top down for lighting up that bullseye. Uh, there is also tritium inside for a night sight action. Now as I said, this sight is different. It definitely takes some getting used to in my book. And while I like that it is low down and basically right on top of the barrel, one thing that I noticed that I struggle with is you really lose sight of your target when you put this sight over the top of it because it's completely obscured by that sight mechanism. You don't see around the sight blade, so to speak, to still see your target. That being said, I do think it can be still a very effective sight, you know, but not a target sight, I don't think. Now, looking at the targets from this video, you would think, wow, it's actually pretty good, and it is pretty good, though one thing that is not obvious from this video that I'm going to point out is this sight was in its ideal conditions for this video. Over the top, we had fluorescent lights directly overhead, which gave the that window full light to maximize the illumination and the visibility of this bullseye sight. It was crystal clear in the conditions that we shot in today. And basically, I've shot it outside, I've shot it in four seasons, and inside in this setup was the best that sight's ever looked. So keep that in mind. Now let's move on to get the Hellcat. Let's do another shout out to our friends at Daryl's Gun Shop. Thanks for letting us use your range again. Always a kick-ass time there. Shoot a little left.
the Springfield Hellcat is a striker fired 9mm micro double stack pistol. It has a length of 6 inches, a height of 4 inches, a width of 1 inch, weighs in at 17.9 ounces, and has a 3 inch barrel. Now keep in mind this RDP model does have a 3.8 inch barrel that allows for the use of the auto indexing compensator. It comes milled ready for a red dot and also has the hex red dot in the box that you can attach. Both of which we've covered in our original review already. The gun has a flat face trigger with shoehorn safety. It also features nice low profile controls and this model which I have the ambidextrous safety model which you can there is a non-safety model available as well. The sights on the Hellcat are what they call their U-dot night sights. That's a tritium front sight with a U-dot uh, flat white on black rear sight. Works pretty well. How about a little more range time? Keep that pointed safe. Now let's try a couple through the SIG. I do think the Hellcat has what I'm going to consider mild recoil for a gun that size. It's not unpleasant at all. Here we go, SIG. Get that offhand under control. It's a subtle difference, very subtle. Safety off. Okay, back to the SIG again for the last seven shots. There we go. Here's the target for the SIG, as you can see it represented well today. And now we have the target for the Hellcat. As you can see as I get that side adjusted, it's getting more and more centered like I like. And a non-scientific test to see if we can tell a difference in recoil. The Hellcat first, and then we will do the SIG in the second shot here. When it comes to comparing the two guns, if we ignore the add-ons that the RDP has, the size of these two guns is nigh indistinguishable. It's about one-tenth difference in barrel length, a tenth of an ounce difference in weight, just such minor details that are different that you'd almost think they were clones of each other. Doing our sideways top-down look, you can see they basically overlap completely with each other other than maybe a subtle difference in trigger guard style very similar guns. To make this a fair competition, I put the Hogue grip sleeves on there, and they're basically indistinguishable in the grip to me now. I mean, they're very, very similar guns. And one mentionable difference is in magazine capacity. The Hellcat comes with a 11 and a 13 round magazine, which I'm showing the 13 round here. The SAS 365 comes with 10 round magazine. 
And one thing I think is interesting is the Hellcat magazines are just a smidge big enough in all the areas that let them be about the same size while having better capacity. And where I think it's interesting is you'll see when I put these guns in the sideways down view with the 10 and the 13 round mag, the grips are the same size because of the, uh, the subtle differences in how those uh, magazines are shaped. In my opinion, this does give the Hellcat an advantage in that you can have a higher capacity magazine in the gun while still taking up the same amount of real estate in terms of your grip profile. Now you can get manufacturer made 15 round magazines for both guns, uh, probably larger for the 365 since it can shoot guns with I think bigger models. Uh, though in my opinion, because I do have a 15 round mag for the 365, it's just big enough to not be a carry mag for me. But it is a fun range mag nonetheless. So if you made it this far, you're probably wondering which is better, the SIG P365 or the Springfield Hellcat? And the way I'm going to answer that question is I'm going to say, I think if you like one, you're going to like the other. Uh, they're both very similar guns. They're very, very similar in size, similar in weight, similar in capacity. Yes, the Hellcat out the box has a little edge, but you can get 15 round mags for both if capacity is your thing, so they're basically neck and neck there in my book. They shoot very similar. They can you get them from the manufacturer with very similar features. I'm unaware of SIG having one with a compensator, but frankly it wouldn't surprise me if tomorrow I see one available because of how these two are trying to compete in this segment of the market. You can definitely get them both optics ready and even with optics attached, and I think they even put at least decent enough optics to where if you want something better you can certainly get better, but you're not going to complain if what you get is what you can afford, and I think that's you know wise of them to do it that way. So either way, I don't think you can go wrong with either model. I think they're both very good. I've had zero failures from either one. And while I've shot the SIG a lot more, and we're approaching our 1,000 round four season review that we'll be posting later this month, I'm confident that when we get there next year with the Hellcat, that we will be in the same boat today that we are with the SIG. And saying that after you know going on 1,000 rounds and four seasons and shooting in everything from blowing snow to hundred degree heat and humidity that we're not going to have a problem. So anyway, I hope you found all that information useful. Thanks for watching, and as always, have a good day.